Good afternoon. Welcome to Calvary Lutheran Church on this, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. This afternoon, we'll follow the order of service as found printed in the service folder. We'll begin with our opening hymn, To Your Temple I Draw Near, number 226. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. 
for the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. Your ears are always open to the prayers of your humble servants who come to you in Jesus' name. Teach us always to ask according to your will, that we may never fail to obtain the blessings you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson this afternoon comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 24, reading verses 3 through 11. Moses came and reported to, to the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. Then all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He got up early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He set up 12 memorial stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young Israelite men who offered whole burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings of cattle to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and he splashed half of the blood on the altar. He took the book of the covenant and read it out loud to the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. We will obey. Moses took the blood and splashed it on the people. He said, Look, here is the blood of the covenant which the Lord made with you by means of all these words. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up. They saw the God of Israel. Under his feet they saw what looked like a pavement of sapphire as clear as the sky. The Lord did not lay his hand on the dignitaries of the people of Israel. They gazed at God and they ate and drank. This is the word of our Lord. We continue with our psalm of the day, Psalm 84. It's found on page 96 in Christian worship. <laughs> Oh, 
Our second lesson this day comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, reading verses 1 through 7 and 11 through 16. As a prisoner in the Lord, therefore, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Live with all hum humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in the one hope of your calling. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in us all. But to each one of us grace was given, according to the measure of the gift from Christ. He himself gave the apostles as well as the prophets, as well as the evangelists, as well as the pastors and teachers, for the purpose of training the saints for the work of serving, in order to build up the body of Christ. This is to continue until we all reach unity in the faith and knowledge of the Son of God, resulting in a mature man with a stature reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ. The goal is that we would no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, when people use tricks and invent clever ways to lead us astray. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we would in all things grow up into Christ, who is the head. From him, the whole body, being joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows in accordance with Christ's activity when he measured out each individual part. He causes the growth of the body so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. rise out of respect for the gospel of our Lord. Our gospel this day comes from the book of John, chapter 6, reading verses 1 through 15. 
After this, Jesus crossed over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias. A large crowd followed him, because they saw the miraculous signs he was performing on those who were sick. Jesus went up on the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a huge crowd coming toward him, he asked Philip, Where can we buy bread for, all, for these people to eat? But Jesus was saying this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to have just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what is that for so many people? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, so they sat down. There were about 5,000 men. Then Jesus took the loaves, and after giving thanks, he distributed pieces to those who were seated. He did the same with the fish, as much as they wanted. When the people were full, he told his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, so that nothing is wasted. So they gathered them, and filled twelve baskets with pieces from the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. When the people saw the miraculous sign Jesus did, they said, This really is the prophet who was coming into the world. When Jesus realized that they intended to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated for our next hymn, Jesus Priceless Treasure.
my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The portion of scripture for our consideration this, mor- this day is from the book of John, our gospel. John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. And while we have switched from the book of Mark to the book of John, we are still very close in time to last week's gospel lesson when Jesus and his disciples were retreating to the remote places for rest. The crowds of people Jesus had been preaching to and healing the sick of, they followed them. And as we see in this lesson here today, they follow them all the way to the far side of the lake. And as Jesus is speaking with his disciples, they see a tremendous crowd coming towards them. A crowd, we're told, has 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And as this crowd is coming up, Jesus takes the opportunity to teach his disciples. He turns to Philip and he asks him, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asks this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he is going to do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not, worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to have just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that for so many people? Jesus asks this question. Feed the people. Where are you going to get enough bread to feed this massive crowd? And we know that there was probably some time after Jesus asked this for his disciples to ponder it because Jesus does take the time to teach this crowd and to heal their sick and it is not until they are late in the day and it's too late for them to go someplace else to find something to eat when finally the answers need to be coming. And so after a day of thinking about it and discussing it with the other disciples, the best answer Philip can come up with is, we don't have anywhere near enough money to do it. If we had 200 days wages, more than or the better part of a year, we couldn't do it. Andrew's response is merely, well, we found this one boy who brought some food for himself, that's not going to cut it. The only part of their answer to Jesus that they get right is that the task for them is impossible. But the task was not impossible for Jesus. He gives them his answer. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, so they sat down. There were about 5,000 men. Then Jesus took the loaves, and after giving thanks, he distributed pieces to those who were seated. He also did the same with the fish, as much as they wanted. When the people were full, he told his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over so that nothing is wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with pieces from the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. When the people saw the miraculous sign Jesus did, They said, this really is the prophet who is coming into the world. Jesus solves the issue of the impossible crowd to feed with his divine almighty power. The answer the disciples should have been is, Lord, we cannot do this, but we trust that you can and will provide for the needs of these people. And for Jesus, who is true God, Lord of all, feeding this crowd as impressive as it was, was not a particularly challenging thing. He feeds them so that 
all of them eat until they're, food, they're full and there is 12 basketfuls left over. It's no wonder the people gathered there that day are amazed. After all, who wouldn't be? But as big and as wonderful as this miracle is, it is important to note how Jesus fulfilled these needs. It was a problem that only Jesus could solve, but he intentionally did so in a way that allowed his people to share and serve each other. As true God, he did not need five loaves of bread and two fish to start from. But the Lord allows that boy to share what he has and to praise God and love his neighbor by using that food. The Lord of all does not need the disciples to go and to have the people sit down and distribute the food. And yet, he chooses to give them the opportunity to serve, to use their abilities to go and organize and distribute. The Lord of all did not need the remainder gathered, gathered up so that it could be used again the next time they gathered. But he sends his disciples to gather 12 basketfuls to show how abundantly God had, had poured out his love on his people there that day. While doing the job that only Jesus could do, this mighty miracle, our God made sure that his people could also serve him and their neighbor. This is how our Lord continues to provide for our needs. There are absolutely things that only Jesus can do, and he did not lose sight of that for a second. As the people gathered there that day, look at him and decide they want to make him king, he quickly withdraws. Because there was a much bigger need that needed to be filled, a much more important job that only he could do, he had come to fix the problem between us and God. To remove the burden and guilt of sin. To go to the cross and offer up there his perfect life, his holy precious blood, so that sin would be paid for. Redemption would be complete. He went to the cross and died so that the power of death and hell would be broken. And then he rose from the dead, proclaiming his victory over death. And he gives us his holy, precious righteousness so that we can stand in God's presence with confidence as his dearly loved children. All of this is work only Jesus could do. And he did it. But he still has opportunities for us to serve, to show our love and thanks for him accomplishing these things, and to love our neighbors around us. Our God has blessed us in a multitude of different ways and put us into all sorts of different places and times and peoples here on earth. But in whatever place we are in, he has blessed us with the joy and opportunity to serve. Perhaps he has given us blessings that we can share, like he gave that boy who brought the five loaves of bread and two fish. Maybe he's given us talents and abilities to serve, like the disciples he sent out to distribute and gather. But 
whatever blessings he has given us, he has also given us opportunities to use them. He gives us chances to show our thanks and praise to him for his wondrous love to us by loving and serving our neighbor. And that's more than just with physical blessings. We get to share in the spreading of the spiritual ones too. Because he has given all of us the call to proclaim that good news of Jesus Christ who died and rose again in love to save. He, there is not a one of us who cannot pray for those who are in need, weak, weakness or sickness. And we furthermore have opportunity to then be a small part of the answer to that prayer in the way we treat those who are needy or sick. We have opportunities that come in day in and day out all around us to serve our God and serve our neighbor with the blessings he has given to each and every one of us. My brothers and sisters, God has done the work only he can do. But now he gives us that privilege, that joy to serve him and to serve our neighbor. May we always treasure that work that Jesus has done for us. And may we always rejoice to love and serve the people God has put around us. Our God loved us first by sending Jesus. Let us love one another by serving when the opportunity is given to us by our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Please rise as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us continue with the prayer of the church. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to the whole Christian church on earth. 
Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith, and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
You may be seated. This time we invite all those who are members of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod to come forward and receive the true body and blood of the Lord. Please rise. prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West, number 539. Once again, good afternoon and welcome to all of you. Pleasure worshiping with you here today. Reminder, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we are continuing our look at the book of Psalms. Uh, if you'd like to join us for that Bible study, it is online through Zoom. Please, uh, if you're not already getting my emails, get your email to me and I'll be happy to, happy to get you that link so that you can join us for that. <laughs> 